screwing around and start! Theo here, and today we're going to be talking about what makes a deck good. Currently in the meta we have four decks, Clifford, Shadal, Burning Abyss, and Stellar Knights. These four decks take up almost all the top tables, you rarely see something else, and some people have been trying to take their decks, like me, trying to play with decks such as Windups or Medulches, and you wonder, how does my deck compete, and why can it not compete against some of these decks? So this video right here is going to be in order to try and explain to you how a deck becomes good. So right now, something there are four things that we can really analyze about certain decks in the current meta. The first thing is how fast it is with their cards, how soon they can get to the cards that they need, how much they need the cards, how many cards they run that they don't need. It's very, very reliant on that. Such as the Clifford deck, they run three copies of the Summoner's Art for the three copies of Tool. And they also run two copies of the Dragon, so that way they can get to their Tool. When they have Tool, they have game. It's very simple with that. That's why people are running so much hate against the spell hate right now. Such as Fairy Wind or Multiple MST, side decking other crazy cards such as Dust Tornadoes. This is to help fight against the tool, because that is something that helps them search a lot. This is probably the weakest example out of these decks. You have decks such as the Stellar Knights. They have a little bit more trouble because they go for plays, as opposed to just one card. So they use cards such as Upstart, Reckless uh, Greed. You also have cards such as Pot of Duality, and then all of this to get to Denev to get to the rest of their cards, such as Altair. They run cards like Unicolai to help search for this. This is how often they can get to their cards. Burning Abyss, the whole deck is able to search for itself. You can tell a good deck from a bad deck because a bad deck will use so many of the new cards that they do nothing. They do no plus, no generation, they draw all this stuff. That is why you see a lot of ratios of two of the negators and one of the spellbounds, or two of the spellbounds, one of the negator, because they know the deck cannot handle more than that because they need to get to their pieces, which is all the other pieces. The last deck that I will talk about here is the Shadal deck, and why does that work is the deck can fusion from the deck, as well as the monsters can search for the pieces that they need, so it's like stuff like Beast, when it's sent to the graveyard, gives you an additional draw. The deck works really well in that sense. So once we think about these cards, we can start realizing different things, such as the second thing that makes a deck good right now is the explosiveness, or the ability to make plays. Stellar Knights have one play, which is kind of Altair. Altair gets all their plays. I mean, you can use Vega to get Altair just for an extension. And once their plays are off, you can use the um, Avarice card to put them back in the deck and draw. And that is your kind of main play. They go for their XYZs using Altair. And that is what makes the deck good. They have their Solemn Judgment plus the Altair. You have decks like Shadals, which they make their fusions, and they can fuse them up and just constantly dump everything on the field, and if they do it right, they can get stuff like the Falco and the Beast in play and synchro things and keep things on the field and be able to get more effects from cards going to the graveyard at all times, making that deck good. Burning Abyss, everything triggers. Very few decks can say that, but they can use cards like Karma Cut and go plus off of it, because they're putting stuff in the grave to reuse for later. They have a super Icarus Attack on steroids, which makes the deck amazing. And then we have the last deck, which is the Clifford, and the reason why that deck's really good is it explodes. It's an OTK deck. Once they get the tool, they pay, they search, they bounce, they tool. For more summons, they can use stuff like Sacrifice, super spam the field. Their field is set. They can win in one turn, maybe two, if they can't win that first turn, because you have the strangest card. The deck does a really good job of that. These things all help because they are able to get to their key cards, as well as they're able to explode. Another thing that the deck has to be able to do is recover. Strangely enough, if a Clifford deck is able to go off, and you stop them after they go off, they can recover. After they've done everything, they're able to pendulum scale, bring everything back, and win. A second time. You cannot stop the second go unless you can MST their cards, but the way they do things is sometimes they end up with the extra cards in their hand to reset their scale in the next turn, which is interesting, especially with some of these newer cards coming out, allowing them to put it back in the deck and draw some more. There are just lots of ways, so this deck is able to hold its own. Burning Abyss, they make all their plays and spam a bunch, but they never lose anything. They always keep their hand advantage, they always keep their field advantage, and they use their graveyard like it's stinking another deck. You have another deck that can do things, which is the Shadal deck. Because they're able to fuse from their deck, they lose little to no hand presence, as well as each one of their monsters does something for them, such as Beast drawing a card, and if it's on the field, flipped up, drawing two and discarding one. Falco, resummoning itself when it's set, the deck does a really good job at keeping its hand presence, keeping its presence, and being able to re-explode. Altair is the perfect version of this as well for the Stellar Knight deck, because Altair, Altair, Vega, Deneb, or Vega, Altair, Deneb, or just... Altair, bring back a card. That just turns back to the game. 
being able to use a free wolf bark that is just wonderful, especially with the fact that they'll get a search off the Deneb or a new knuckle eye, send a card to the graveyard, and they have their own judgment card. They are flawless here. The last thing you really have to be able to think about with these kind of decks is you have to be able to keep something on the field or keep some sort of presence. Cliff Wars have a skill drain in their deck because they do not need their effects. They are completely optional with tributing them and such. They get their effects off of the field and get their crazy abilities as well as all their stats go up to huge stats after they've normal summoned them and they reset. You have cards such as the Shadal deck. They always keep everything. They have all the outs. They can stop anything because being able to use cards like Karma Cut and Phoenix Wing without any cost is something not a lot of decks can do. The next deck is Shadals. They can just deal with everything. They have cards like Winda. They have cards like Construct. They don't have to worry about problems like that. And they can make them for free by using their fusion cards from their deck or instantly from their hand during your opponent's turn using cards like the Quick Play. It is just really, really well put together. And the last deck out of these is Teller Knights, and they have three of their own Solemn Judgment making it so you can't do anything. And if you do, they make their XYZ. You can't negate their summons. When you finally do something about it, flip up the trap, pop the XYZ, get more searches and summons, get more cards, draw a free card off of the trap. It does a really good job. So what you need for your own deck is the ability to keep plays, make plays, stop your opponent. You need all of these things. And not a lot of decks can do this. As I was explaining with my windups, I'd been trying to play them for a while. And if you had watched one of my most recent streams, at the end, I was messing around with some dumb idea that I actually ended up taking very seriously in later testing. Being able to combine the wind-up deck with its explosiveness and its ability to keep its cards in its hand from the deck and in the graveyard and using everything, mixing it with some of the other engines that with this deck was missing, it becomes very, very good at what it does. A splash of, let's say, the three copies of the... Sanctum and three copies of Moral Type. This, these cards together just allow you to keep cards, popping cards, keeping field presence, and keeping level fives for really good XYZs for this deck, as well as cards like the Tour Guide Skarm Dante Engine, allowing you to put cards in your graveyard since windups do a really good job of recycling things. And you're just able to maximize off of all this. And the way that the deck works and the way it likes to play allows you to take complete advantage, especially of cards like just silly BLS that everyone's splashing. You have to be able to realize your deck must take care of everything that, that you need to win a duel, which is not only being able to explode, but being able to keep everything in your hand, in your presence, where you want it. It doesn't have to be in your hand if you prefer it in the grave with a deck like Zombies, but being able to keep the presence where you want it. As well as you also have to be able to deal with your opponent's cards. Sometimes with really good decks, such as a Noble Knight deck, you're able to get your plays off really easy. And the reason why Noble Knights do okay to sometimes better is they can make their play and you can't touch their card. They're really protected from your cards and you won't be able to do anything about it. But what makes them bad, and by bad I mean unoptimal compared to these other decks, is they don't have a way to deal with the opponent's cards besides if you're running a Denko Seika, summoning that. That is like your only option. The deck can use some other special techs and such, but every single trap card tech you run runs away from being able to use your own equips, and every monster effect you run takes away from your normal summon, which is very important for the deck. So they have a really big problem with trying to deal with the opponent's cards. You must be able to take into account every single one of these to make your deck good. If you liked this video, remember to like this video, share it to all your friends, comment down below, and subscribe for more content. I would really like to see down below what you guys think are important and what you think makes a deck really good. I hope I covered this really well, and as always, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Yeah.